Hello, everyone. This is Jay Alejandro with the Creative Drive Podcast, the short podcast to showcase and feature writers from all walks of life, no matter where they are in the world. Today, we feature the work of Sherry Vernon. Sherry, she, her, hers, is a seeker of a mystical grammar and a recipient of the Parent Writer Fellowship at the Martha's Vineyard Institute of Creative Writing. She has two award-winning chapbooks, Green Ink Wings, fiction, and the name is Perilous, poetry. Readers describe Sherry's work as heartbreaking, richly layered, lyrical, and intelligent. To read more of her work, visit www.sherryvernon.com backslash publications and tag her into conversation at Sherry Vernon. That's S-H-E-R-R-E. V-E-R-N-O-N. And now, three poems by Sherry Vernon. Juniper. Weighted against my chest in a zero-grav chair on the patchwork lawn at dusk, my daughter makes specks with her eyes, hands, calls the moon an egg, Tells me a bird is coming for the sun, screams it into wild birth, and I wonder what she knows of starbed and sprout wing, of ashes and panic. In time, she will be able to name the places where I've secreted her history. Kidney, clavicle, leaf light, an amber brooch in a cedar box. She is only, and I have given her too much name, Pine smoke, gin, the ability to make holy things unseen. Sun eater and everlasting. Forgive me, I am collecting the needles of her dream speak now, while she holds her still fingered hands to my cheeks, neither feather nor flame consuming. Wishing big. She wants big teeth, now, and using half her body for emphasis, attempts to pull out the teeny teeth she spent the last three years growing. She reaches next for mine, perhaps thinking of exchange. She wants big arms, too, and big legs and big toes. She caresses the parts of her body she is wishing larger as she names them. This isn't the first or only time she's asked me for these things in her almost three voice. With her soft, square hands, miniatures of mine. And always, too, there's this asking me permission. She needs me to consent to her transformation. And I do. Despite all the pull against it, I do. I do not tell her what it has been for me to have a big forehead or big belly or what she's wishing for when she asks for big boobs too, giant ones. I tell her only that yes, when she's grown, she will have all these things as though they are mine to gift. She squeals her delight at me at the abundance she can barely wait for at my generosity for all my big body gave her. Thank you, Mommy, thank you. The city cancels 4th of July. But not the fireworks, at least not on our street. The neighbor whose puppies we lift back over the shoddy chain link to their mama. The neighbor who before all this passed my husband Carnitas the same way, is celebrating the pursuit of happiness as defined by the rush of lighting shit on fire. With guests. Music's up, barbecue is on, and my husband is out running interference, hoping to keep the three-year-old in the part of the yard where neither spit nor bottle rockets can reach. And the skies of night were alive with light 
with a throbbing, thrilling flame. My husband, I suspect, has given our Ellie dog so much melatonin that she's on a bad trip, and I mean to ask him from the front door just how many treats he slipped her. I mean, she's barking sideways and lounging down into a glassy-eyed heap. When he calls out from our driveway, leaning over the waist-high gate to the end-lot oleander and a bit of dirt. My man, who will next week bring in a stray ginger kitten, is not wearing a mask but a daredevil tee. My man, who intends only a starlit hammock with his daughter, is tipped forward asking some unseen force. If maybe, if you wouldn't mind, you know, plants are flammable and my three-year-old is right here. When a guest of our good neighbor, who'd littered the road in matches and gunpowder, catches my husband's gentle nudge and untucks himself from ground spinners, emerges from the bushes and stumbles drunkenly toward him. Amber and rose and violet, opal and gold they came. We've never met this man, so my husband stands there like he's going to shake hands, mend fences or some such, until I call after him. He turns toward me with a look of shock, as though suddenly he remembers we are all stuck in this damn pandemic, and steps back. The drunken pyrotechnic ambles further down the street, mumbling, my bad, my bad, and my old man saunters toward me like this is one good deed. When an M80, it swept the sky like a giant scythe. It quivered back to a wedge, whistles and sizzles its entry over the fence and onto our grass. The toddler, in sympathy, plays her harmonica at full lung. The dog rouses herself from her stupor like some berserker cavalry. Even the puppies rally to our cause. My husband, ardently bright, it cleft the night with a wavy golden edge. He hollers and rushes with a shovel and sand and water and foam. It's been a long time since my grandfather taught us to light snakes and sparklers on asphalt, to count and calculate the seconds from spark to fire of Roman candle. But only two years since this whole valley evacuated to a flaming bush. And this man we've never met is back, trying to assert his independence by lifting his leg over our front gate calling my husband names he doesn't understand, names I find too clever to translate. My husband couldn't kick the ass of a spider, but you wouldn't know that the way he's masked up and charging back outside. The dog yips and howls in the wrong direction. The toddler howls and trips, and now she's running toward me with a skinned knee, while the only other woman on the scene is trying to unstuck her lover from the tangle of the gate, and I call mine back to me. I've got something cold to drink, the toddler rocking on my lap. My husband lets out a long sigh, and the neighbor waves like this ain't no thing. And there in our awe, we crouched and saw with our wild, uplifted eyes charge and retire the hosts of fire in the battlefield of the skies. Mm-hmm.